Coming up on Believe in Bears with Joey Christopoulos and my co-host, former Bears defensive end, Corey Wooten. We're going through the Bears' schedule, wins, losses. We're making our predictions here today, so stick around. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming into the show. Whether you're listening on the Believe Sports Network, Sirius XM, or whether you're watching us right now on Sports Talk Chicago, thanks for coming back. we got a fantastic episode where we're going to go through wins and losses of the Bears' schedule. But first, got to bring in my co-host. Let me get this right. He is Fox 32's <laughs> very own. He is CHGO's very own he is the co-owner of the opening this very week in the inaugural <laughs> west end golf course and also now a member of the inside the big 10 network am i missing anything it's former bears defensive end Corey wooten what's up Corey? what's going on joey big weekend uh, for west end golf club you know you told me it seemed like yesterday uh but it's been a long process right you know from the rehab to permits construction you know how it goes it's always more expensive than you think, and it takes a lot longer. But we're here at the finish line, have the opening on Saturday, and we cite all my boys from Northwestern are coming. It's going to be a good event, man. Uh, anybody in the New York City area, North Jersey area, come through West End Golf Club, 118 Jackson Ave in Rutherford, New Jersey. Come check us out. In my opinion, I've been to a lot of simulators, and I'm, people will say I'm biased. I'm not. This is the best simulator that you have ever been to, that you will ever go to at West End Golf Club. I promise you that the Unicor technology is unreal, Joey. It's the only simulator that shows you a live action shot of your club face on impact. No other sim does that. Unbelievable. And they're giving away stuff for free during the inaugural weekend, so make sure you come and check it out. And dude, you can be biased. You go a ton, you go to tons of those simulators all the time. So you're kind of like a common sewer, a sommelier, if oh, you will. Right. And you've taken all the favorite things that you like. You've improved the things that you don't like, and you put it all into West End Golf Club, man. And it's happening, dude. It's fantastic. Yeah, it is. Congratulations. It is excited for it, man. I'm excited for that. And then I'm excited for the big schedule, man. It got released last week. There's a lot to talk about, right? We got wins and losses and, and what have you. But uh, it's going to be an exciting season. I'll tell you what. There's going to be more wins than laughter. I'll tell you that, Joey. Hey, look, and look, some really interesting primetime games. We can get into a little bit as we go through game-by-game game schedule, but you also kind of notice, you know, the Detroit Lions, the class of the NFC North this year. Well, the Chicago Bears have plenty of extra time between those two matchups, and actually they did the numbers. The Chicago Bears have the most time, the most rest week-to-week in and out throughout the entire season. Maybe that pays dividends for the Chicago Bears. So, Corey, what are we waiting for, man? Let's dive right into it, man. We're going to do two things. We're going to go through the schedule. We're going to get your thoughts, Corey. We're going to predict a win or a loss for that week. And we're also going to do something else. Because once we get to the NFL season, this becomes paramount. Each week, we're going to go into it, and we're going to say to ourselves, who has the better quarterback in this matchup? Is it ours, JF1, Flight JF1, in this particular matchup? Or maybe it's the other quarterback at the time. And we're going to weigh those options a little bit because it's a quarterback league. And if you start to stack it up, I think we're going to be a little surprised that Justin Fields might have the edge over some of these guys in some of these matches. So maybe that's going to lean towards some more W. So, Corey, week one, the afternoon game, Bears-Packers at Soldier Field. It's September. The weather is going to be beautiful. We're going to be frothing at the mouth. What say you? What do the Chicago Bears do week one versus the Packers? Oh, this is a bona fide win. Aaron Rodgers went up to New York. He can come by West End if he wants to. He's a big golf aficionado, right? <laughs> He's out of the NFC North. This is an easy win. I, I tell you, Justin Fields is really going to shine in this one. Lou Getzey said he's leaps and bounds of what he's been last year. Finally got the number one receiver. We got this revamped offensive line. I think the pass rush will struggle at times, but I know the run stopping will be there. I think this is an easy win. For Chicago and this this is where you set the tone now that Aaron Rodgers reign is out there him and Brett Favre were terrorizing the Bears for years they're gone they're not there now it's Justin Fields reign let's get it baby new era week one Packers one and oh versus Jordan Love all time a thousand percent winning percentage uh look man I'm with you I'm also going with a W here and I think this is a great matchup for not just the Chicago Bears but for Justin Fields the Justin Fields era to not only just come in and there and beat the Packers, we all love doing that. But if you're going to look, I'm not to tease, not to step on the tease of my schedule here, but I think the Chicago Bears team, the key to the success is playing well at home. This is a great opportunity to be a tone setter against NFC North opponent. They were 0 6 last year, Corey, versus the NFC North. I think that's going to change this year, and it starts with the Bears versus the Packers. Um, I'm feeling win here too, as well. And Corey, I'm going to just say it. Justin Fields, clear advantage over Jordan Love. I think he gets the quarterback the quarterback uh, advantage in this one for sure. You know, I, th I think Green Bay 
isn't going to love him. I think they're going to hate him. So you call him Jordan hate at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that yet. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get him with that one. But yeah, just Justin Fields, I, I'm excited for him, especially in the opening game. Uh, the rivalry there. I know it's, it's going to be a little weird with Aaron Rodgers not being there. Um, but I think this is a great game for him to really show how much he's improved from from uh, last year to this year, and especially with the offensive line and the weapons there, to really showcase his talents and show that he can be a top-five quarterback in this league. And maybe a cherry on the Sunday for a young ascending defense to play a young, hopefully not ascending quarterback, also can get them you know, in the right mind frame, the right attitudes will step out of there week one. Week two, Corey, we're moving on. They go down to Tampa Bay in September to play a Buccaneers team that I don't think people have a lot of expectations for. It may or may not be Baker Mayfield, at quarterback. But again, those games in Florida in September can be a little tricky, can be a little sneaky. What do you have for Bears-Buccaneers week two? I got a Bears with a win on this one. I think the, the edge is Justin Fields in the offense, right? You look at last year, how many games they were into down to the wire against really good opponents. I think they're going to be able to close a lot of these games. And like I said, defensively, it's not going to be pretty with the pass rush of time. I think they're going to dial it up with the t- uh, talented linebacking core. But one thing for sure, Ibra Blues and company and Alan Williams, they're going to make sure that run is stopped, right? So so they got two, two three new defensive tackles, right? Um, Justin Jones as well. So I think they're excited about their run-stopping ability. Pass rush is going to be a question mark, but no doubt they're going to stop the run. And I think this is another win. They start out the season 2-0. and uh, that's a great call. I was thinking about that too as well. You know, you get that thing of the humidity in September. You know, the Bears are going to be obviously in game shape, but this is a different mentality when you go down there to Florida. But I have questions, right? Is Rashad White going to be the bell cow in Tampa Bay? Do they have their running back room really put together? And do they have the quarterback that's going to have the defense off the sniff of a running game to be able to balance that out? I doubt that. I'm going with the win here too as well. We'll see what happens come September. I'm probably maybe going a little bit maybe on the points under on this one. Mm -hmm. Uh, But again, I'm also giving the the advantage to Justin Fields. Justin Fields, again, now is the better quarterback in the first two matchups of the first two weeks of the season. So, um, so far the Chicago bears two and Oh, keep in mind. They were two and one last year, Corey. Exactly. (laughs) And then then only one win after that things happen. So having said that, let's move on to week three. Uh, Look, (laughs) there's a, there's a shark in the water here. Uh, Look, I haven't found anyone or any pundit that says the Bears are going to win this week three game. They're playing at Kansas City. It is going to be an afternoon game. Uh, The Kansas City Chiefs fought very hard to keep this game not in Germany. Uh, It is going to be in Kansas City, so all the the Bears uh, faithful can come out and hopefully support. Uh, Great barbecue that weekend. Are we going to see great results in the football field, though? I think we'll see a great performance from the offense of Justin Fields, but I think Patrick Mahomes in the offense is going to be too high power for this defense. The lack of pass rush at times. Uh, Mahomes, he can get the ball out quick. He has Travis Kelsey and company. Um, I just think this is too tough of a matchup, especially at Arrowhead. That's a tough place to play, man. They get that crowd rocking. Um, so I think ultimately it's it's a closer game than most people think, I think, within a score. Um, but I think uh, Patrick Mahomes and the defending world champs get the best of the Bears. But this is good experience for Justin Fields. And that offense going on the road in a hostile place. And uh, I think he comes out with a good performance. Yeah, just a quick follow-up on this one. Just, you know, first blush, this is May. So don't worry about anything. We talk a lot about the defensive line. This feels like one of those ultimate tests for a young secondary. The Jaquan Briskers, the Kyler Gordons, hopefully a Tyreek Stevenson as a starter. Um, You know, Early on in the season, do you think that is something where, you know, if they kind of have a rough afternoon, they can learn from it early enough in the year to be able to kind of build off of that and maybe turn this into a learning experience that actually helps them later in the season? I think so, because going against a guy like Patrick Mahomes, I mean, he's going to hit you with all types of things that other quarterbacks don't always do, right? He's going to be looking this way, then go across the field. Like He's going to make those throws that are unbelievable, those highlight reel type things. So going against him is only going to elevate your competition. So I think it's it's a great learning experience, especially for this defense to go against arguably the best in the league. So there's there's always lessons, especially when when you know people say, oh well, look, you got You got to get something out of that loss. And I think the, this is a great learning experience for the defense to go up against one of the best and arguably one of the best tight ends to ever play the game, and Travis Kelsey. Uh, so it'll be a good matchup, especially for those talented linebackers. Um, how how they cover him. What's their game plan for yeah. them? Because going forward, every really good team 
has a dominant uh, tight end, and there's none better than Travis Kelsey. Like, even if you lose the game, can you imagine a scenario where maybe in the third quarter the Bears are battling, they're down a little bit, but Tyreek Stevenson picks off Patrick Mahomes? I mean, what can that, that possibly would, would do? What can that possibly do, even if it's not consequential to the game, to what can it possibly do to their season? So, we haven't met 2-1. and one. I think we both have the quarterback advantage. We got two Justin Fields quarterbacks mm-hmm. advantage. We got one, obviously, we're giving that to one to Patrick Mahomes. I'm really curious to see what your take is on this next one. Um, because this one I had to think about a whole lot. I think this is definitely a toss-up game. The Bears hosting the new-look Sean Payton Denver Broncos yeah. at Soldier Field uh, beginning of October. Corey, I'm going to just say it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to front this one. I got this one as a loss. What say you? I got this as a win. I think if they were they were in Denver, I think that'd be a win uh, for, for Denver. But I think playing at Soldier Field, um, I'm not really sold on, on, on Russell Wilson right now. I know – He's coming off a really bad year. I'm just not sure how his confidence will rebound. It'll be interesting to see week one and two, how he really goes through things, how he is under that Sean Payton offense. But it could work out. It could be a blessing for his career. But right now, I'm not sold on him. I, I don't believe that locker room really fully buys into him. Uh, guys yelling at him, teammates on the defense yelling at him. Um, so I, I have to see, right? And at this point, from what I saw last year, obviously this could be a completely new Russell Wilson that we see this year, but I'm not sold on him, especially playing at Soldier Field. I think Justin Fields has the edge in this one. I think it'll be a close one. Yeah, I definitely think that is completely plausible. The reason why I went with the loss is I'm just trying to protect my heart a little bit. One, two, if Sean Payton is going to have this effect on the Denver organization, I think we're probably going to see it earlier in the year, get off to a great start. Maybe he's dialing up a couple of plays and I am asking myself if there is a situation where Russell Wilson might be have an opportunity to have a strong game. It could be on third down against a younger secondary and maybe a defensive line still trying to figure out maybe it's rotation or some guys are still trying to make their way. So I am going with the loss in this one. But, Corey, just really quick, I am giving the advantage to Justin Fields in this quarterback matchup. I know Russell, Russell will be a Hall of Famer. He's got Super Bowls. But right now, today, Looking forward, I'm giving Justin Fields the advantage in this one. Do you agree with me on that? No, I, I agree with you. I, I think he's really going to surprise people because if you look at it, um, you, you look at the comments, you look at the commentary uh, from guys like LaShawn McCoy, really hating on Justin Fields, saying he's a bona fide running back. Um, if you look at the tape from college, uh, he was he was a drop back passer. Uh, he was forced last year to do it because of the offensive line situation, lack of weapons. Now you finally got him the number one receiver. You got him the offensive line. There's no excuses at this point. So if Justin Fields has a bad season, you have every right to get after him and critique him the way you want to. But I, I know he's a competitor, and I know when he could be a drop-back passer. Obviously, he uses his feet. But when I imagine him to be a better version of Jalen Hurts, and that's not taking anything away from Jalen Hurts because I love what he's been able to do. He's arguably a top-five quarterback in this league. What he's been able to do for Philly – but I think Justin Fields' ceiling is way higher than his as a passer. He can run faster. There's nothing that Justin Fields cannot do. It's now about understanding how to read the, the opposing defenses, right? And it makes it a lot easier because you, you look at what happened when they brought in A.J. Brown in, in Philly, right? It made it that much easier for Jalen Hurts, just like D.J. Moore coming in. And then you add Tyler Scott as well. So you got a receiver room that can get it done now, right? You got Robert Tyne and you got Cole, Cole Komet. You got guys that can catch the ball in the red zone. I think all the pieces are there, and I think Justin Fields is really going to flourish. And I think people are going to be very surprised. And I think they're going to say, well, you know what? They gave him this and they gave him that. And, you know, they'll they'll make up excuses why he's doing well. But the thing is, very few quarterbacks in this league can play well without talent. Aaron Rodgers, in my opinion, is one of the only ones to to really be able to do that consistently. And even on the years when he doesn't have that talent, you know, he throws, what, 29 touchdowns at five interceptions. This is a down year for him, right? So I think Justin Fields is really going to flourish. And I, I'm, I'm excited, Joey. This is the most excited I've been uh, for a Bears season since I played. Uh, so it's, yeah. it's, it's going to be it's going to be an awesome season. Um, so I have them as three and one. You have them as two and two. I got them That's at fun. two and two heading into Washington for Thursday night football against the Washington Commanders. Uh, this is revenge city for me. Um I know it's a road game. 
Uh, you got them 2-0 and on the, uh, at home right now. You got to take care of business on the road. I think this is one of the, those road pickup wins for the Chicago Bears. Again, who is the quarterback for the Washington Commanders? Is it Sam Howell? I give the advantage completely to Justin Fields, which means for the first five matchups this season, I think the better quarterback on the field will be Justin Fields. I got them winning to go 3-2 and two here. What say you? Yeah, I got them winning to go 4-1 and one right here. I think it's the quarterback advantage. I think it's it's a bounce back from last season. They have a really talented defensive line, so it'll be interesting to see, right, how this revamped offensive line handles them. They have Sweat and Company, uh, Pay, um, who else they got? Uh, Jonathan Allen as well. Um, so they have a lot of talent. Up yeah, front. Chase so, Chase Young for now. <laughs> Chase Young, right? Chase Young as well. So yeah, I think I think he's been an afterthought. Even me, I'm thinking like he seems like he's been hurt for three years, but yeah. now they're saying he's healthy. So. That's a pretty talented defensive line right there. You got four guys that are really capable of Pro Bowl caliber, especially if Chase Young is back. So it's going to be a great test uh, for for all that offensive line, especially um, Washington is a hard place to play. That crowd is rocking as well um, on a night game where everyone's watching. So I really like that matchup, but I think ultimately it comes down to Luke Getzey and company out scheming the commanders, being able to get it done with Justin Fields, mixing and matching, that play action pass, screens, draws, getting that defensive line off balance. So I, I got the edge, Justin Fields and company, and them going to what is that, four and one or five and one? I got you. We got you at uh we got you at four and one right now. Four and one. We got, one. We got a loss to the the loss to the Kansas City yep. Chiefs. And man, you just brought up something really interesting where I think, and we all can admit that, you know, when they lost twelve to seven on the one eighth inch yard line uh to Darnell Mooney last year. I think that was not only rock bottom for the offense, but it's probably rock bottom for Luke Getze's young career as a play caller. And, and we were criticizing him, I think, the week after in a very, very healthy way of like, look, like, I mean, come on, man. We all know that there's so much more in there. And now you're heading into the following year. We get a chance to play them again. And I, I hear you on the defensive line, but still, I don't see any offensive weapons on the commanders right now. And I see this as a bounce back for Luke Getze. I think the offense will be in better shape. And I'm picking a win, too, as well. Interesting one heading into the very next week. Back to the NFC North, but hosting again at home against the Minnesota Vikings. Corey, man, I, I, I want you to go first on this one. Um, what do you think happens to this game? Who wins this game? I think this is a win for the Bears, especially at home. I, I think they lose on the road uh, later in the season. Uh, it's a, a tough place to play in that dome in Minnesota. But, you know, I think I think this is one where usually at home, when the defense can stop the run, they're able to get after Kirk Cousins, right? I think we're going to add some defensive linemen. I think we're going to add some ends and edge pressure, and we're really going to be able to dial it up with the linebacking core. So I think this is one where we fluster Kirk Cousins early. We were able to knock out that run. And, hey, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind uh, d- doubling uh, Justin Jefferson in this game, right? Take him out Please. of the ball game. That's what, that's what teams were doing towards the end of the season. That's what the Giants did. They were able to contain him. I mean, ultimately, right, he – the guy that can beat you. Um, Kirk Cousins struggles at times. The Bears get the dub. Just real quick with the Minnesota Vikings, trading Zadarius Smith, you know, what's your what's your take on that? That's a bit of your corner. Is that is that really a cost-cutting move? Did you see him take a step back as a player? Does this take the Minnesota Vikings defense as a whole a step back? You know, what's your take on that trade in general? Yeah, I was I was surprised because you had him and Daniel Hunter that were both the bookends there. Uh, they were able to garner that pressure, and then you trade him away. It probably came down to cap hit. Um, they were spending too much money, and uh, I think that's ultimately coming. But it's hard to come by good pass rushers that can get double-digit sacks, and I think they traded away a good one. Yeah, so I also have them as a win here too as well. Now, look, you know, when we played the Minnesota Vikings last year, there was times, what was it, Kirk, Kirk Cousins started 20 for 20? I think yep. it was 19 for 19, something like that. That was at, but, that was at, that was at their home, right? I that believe was, that was in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and we're going to get to that one a little bit later, and maybe that's a tease of how I feel about that game. But, um, you know, the law of averages says that's not going to happen again. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm all, I'm also going with a victory here at home. I think this is a great opportunity again against an NFC North opponent. Take care of business at home, riding high a little bit off of that Washington game, and I got that as a victory right there, Corey. So I got them. You got them at five and one. I got them at four and two. Just really quick, Kirk Cousins, Justin Fields, um, is that? Can we say that's advantage Justin Fields? Or are we just kind of calling that a wash a little bit right now? Just because, look, I'm not scared when I play Cousins, but look, the guy has done it for a long time. Yeah. 
So where where are you uh, on? I would, yeah, I would say that's a wash, especially in the regular yeah. season early on. He is a wonder, right? He'll he would light it up with numbers, um, just just like every other season, right? His regular season stats are unbelievable. In the playoffs, he struggles. Um, so I think in this one, it's pretty much a watch. It comes down to the defense, which defense plays better, right? I think there's some games where Justin Fields is really going to have the advantage, but I think in this game, it comes down to the defense. Who could really stop the talented playmakers, right? we got T.J. Moore and company, um, and then also Justin Jefferson on the other side. So I think it's going to be the battle of who can contain the wide receiver position. Yeah, and so we both got him picking up a win here, which is great because, honestly, this is the part where it kind of enters a little bit into, uh, I guess we're going to call it the more difficult part of the schedule for the Chicago Bears. They then stay at home. They host the Oakland Raiders the next week. Um, excuse me, the Las Vegas Raiders. Jeez, uh, drink for that one. Uh, good Lord. Yeah. Um, Corey, man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I got this one actually as a loss um, at home. Yeah, I do too. Week, yeah, week seven, I still think Jimmy G is healthy enough. Devontae yeah. Adams scares me. Josh Jacobs, the reigning NFL rushing yeah. leader last year. A lot to prove. Um, I got this one as a loss. Yeah, I got this as a loss, too. I think Jimmy G uh, has historically played well in, in Chicago, right, uh, against yeah. the Bears. Yes. Um, the, the talented playmakers and, and company, you know, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, Hunter Renfro, uh, those guys, I, I think th there's all the weapons there. Um you know, I think their defense is really talented, Max Crosby and company. Um, I think this is going to be a tough one. I think this is one of those games that, on paper, it looks like the Bears should win, but they're coming high off a couple wins, especially a big win against Minnesota, which I have that pick. And I, I think this is one they they, they drop it here in, in, in a tough one. And, you know, I think you every, every loss is a learning experience, right? You learn about what you did well, what you didn't do well, and, and, and how to rally back. And I think that's the mark of a good team. Sometimes you got to take your medicine while you can and then move on to the next game. Yeah, and you know what? I, I kind of hate this too because I'm not a big fan of Josh McDaniels as a coach. Um, but at that particular juncture in the season, I am also going lost too as well. They stay with the AFC West, but they travel out to LA at SoFi Stadium for Sunday Night Football. Bears at Chargers. Corey, look, I'm going to say it again. I'm also got this one as a loss too as well, but I think this is going to be a wildly, wildly entertaining game. What say you? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be a loss, too. Um, Justin Herbert, you know, he's dialed up at home. Um, you know, he's kind of banged up last year, and he's still putting up numbers. I think it's a tough one anytime you go over there. He's he's one of the the, the rising stars in this league. Um, you know, I think he has the, the edge on Justin Fields in this one, especially playing at home. Uh, so, I, so I got this one as a loss. I think they're going to struggle a little bit, um, you know, containing these receivers on the road uh, in a hostile place to play. Yeah, so you got them dropping to five and three. That means the Bears have lost yep. two in a row. We're freaking out. Uh, everyone's calling in the radio stations, uh, screaming at God knows what, Eberflus, whatever. Um, and just to be fair, in the Chargers game, Edge were giving Justin Herbert at this particular time, yep. quarterback-wise. And Raiders, I honestly, I still have that kind of as a wash if Jimmy G's playing in that game. Based on really everything that you just kind of said, and look, I just can't definitively put it out there that Justin yeah. Fields is the better quarterback in that game. But yeah. following that loss to the Los Angeles Chargers, we, they then traveled to the New Orleans Saints uh, to play a game in New Orleans, typically a really mm -hmm. tough place to play. Corey, I'm going with a W on this one. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Is Alvin Kamara playing football this year? I mean, I get that, I get that they have Chris Olave, but that's kind of it from the receiving core. Derek Carr, sure. Um, I don't know. I like the Bears' chances in this game. I went with a W. What say you? Yeah, I got a W, too. Um, usually, it's, it's New Orleans is a tough place to play in that dome. They get it rocking. Um, but I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a firm believer in Derek Carr. You know, I, I think, yeah. in my opinion, I think he's pretty overrated. Um, I think he, I think he's – he turns the ball over too many times. Like, that, that's, that's my biggest pet peeve with him. And I think – this Bears defense, they're going to get takeaways, right? You look at how the secondary played last year. It's only going to go up from there. You know, they added Stevenson and company. Now Gordon can be on the slot, so I think he's going to be more effective. I think they're going to confuse Derek Carr with some blitzes. I think they're really going to be able to get after him. I think this is a two-turnover game, two-interception game for the Bears secondary, and I think Justin Fields has the edge in this one. I think he has a strong performance, maybe a couple touchdowns to DJ Moore. Maybe maybe even Cole Komet in the red zone. That would be huge right there. Um, yeah, I got the Bears winning this one. Yeah, and possibly a game where we can maybe get some sacks. Pick up some exactly. sacks against Derek Carr because the dude doesn't really like to get hit anymore. Trying to get the ball out of, out of the pocket. Um, so, yeah, you got him at 6-3 and three right now. Moving on. 
a uh, very tasty matchup. Another Thursday night football game uh, that you're going to want to get onto your DVR. Bears hosting the Carolina Panthers. Look, Corey, I- I'm curious to hear what you think about this one because, I mean, I'm a little skeptical whether Bryce Young will actually be involved in this game by that time. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, I don't wish ill health upon anyone, but I do understand the punishing aspects of the NFL game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't 100% say who's going to be the quarterback for the Panthers by this point. Um, yeah. Bears Panthers, what do you got in this one? I got the Bears winning this one. I think Carolina is still in, in full rebuild mode. I think they're similar to what the Bears were last year. Um, you know, I think Bryce Young will have his ups and downs. I think he's going to make good decisions for the most part. But the thing is, once you heat up a rookie quarterback, uh, I, I think he's going to struggle a little bit in this game. Um, you know, I think he'll make some good throws here or there, but I think the Bears defense is going to get after him. I think, I think a couple turnovers right here. Um, I think Justin Fields will shine in this one. And I think there's one like, hey, you know, you, you gave us the number nine pick. You gave us you gave us another first round. And we get the dub on you this year. So I think this this, this is a big win. Yeah, and I, I you know, you, you've said this before, um, and I always try and remind myself too as well, rookies on the road. It's never easy. It doesn't matter what the matchup nope. is. It could be one of the worst teams in the NFL. Rookies on the road um, is a learning curve that is unexpected, and I have to put that into account with the Panthers. And uh, just really quick too, don't you think like, don't you think there's a tiny little bit of Justin Fields too as well, kind of saying to himself, like to prove to everyone, you know, at this point now the Bears are seven and three, so they're rocking and rolling. But he wants yep. to put it on Bryce Young, right? I mean, just oh, yeah. kind of a little bit to be like, the Bears are sticking with me. They almost maybe they thought about possibly trading and, and keeping this guy. I'm gonna show everyone that they made the right choice. Is there a little tiny part of that in the in the athlete's mind? I think so. I think he's a competitor and he's he's seen so much criticism even despite the great year he had, right? Obviously, the touchdown numbers don't don't blow you away, but his production and playmaking ability was out of this world. I, I think it's the best playmaking ability by a quarterback probably since Michael Vick, to be honest with yeah. you. So I think this year when he can actually drop back and utilize what he's good at, what he was drafted for, to be more of a pocket passer. Yes, he's an athlete. Yes, he can make things happen. But that is not sustainable for an NFL quarterback. Look how Justin Fields broke down toward the end of the season, right? Hip flexor, his hamstring, his ribs, his shoulder, all this stuff, right? That is not sustainable to run like he did last year. So I think we're going to see a different Justin Fields this year. We're going to see a guy that can drop back, read the progressions, because why? Because he has a better offensive line. He has two dominant guards. He has two really good tackles at this point. Braxton Jones got stronger this offseason. And all of a sudden, everything is a little bit slower this year for Justin Fields. Why? Because he's another year in the system. He's another year wiser. He's more comfortable in this. And I think we're really going to see Justin Fields flourish. And I'm telling you, Joey, I I, I really think there's going to be a lot of people that are surprised that were doubting him, that didn't think he could be an NFL quarterback. He's going to surprise a lot of people. Heber Flus and Ryan Poles, they really put the plan together to surround him with talent. And at this point, like I said earlier, no excuses at this point, right? All the criticism, if he doesn't play well, it's warranted, right? Because yeah. you put all the pieces to put him in a, in a position to succeed. So I'm looking forward to it. I know Bears fans, I know you are. So it's it's going to be a great season. So what do we got now? So we got so I got you. I got you at seven and three. Mm-hmm. Thursday night football. Bears then get what is it? Ten days off mm-hmm. to take on the Detroit Lions in Detroit. L. 10 a.m. start. I'm with you. L. Yeah. I think this yeah, is the first it. one where we're riding high, right? We're a young Bears team. And if you think you got them at seven and three right now, we're riding in and we're saying, hey, this yeah. is a big opportunity. But I see I see a roadblock here. Um, yeah, seven and four at this point, just because after a bye, uh, teams historically, it doesn't matter if you're the Chiefs or not, teams usually uh, struggle after the bye week, right? Just because there's so much time off. People go on vacation, they're off their routine. And uh, yeah, I think this is one um, that they split, just like with Minnesota. I think yeah. at, at Minnesota's home and at Detroit's home, they get they, they get the losses. And at home, at, at Soldier Field, they get the dub. So this one is a loss. Um, Detroit's a good football team. I mean, they, they showed that last year. Um, Dan Campbell and company, Jared Goff is another year in the system. He played really well last year. Aiden Hutchinson has another year under his belt. Um, they're putting all the pieces to the puzzle in Detroit. I really like what they're building because they've been bad for so long. They're on the rise right now. So the last time they've been like this was Jim Caldwell was the head coach. 
I like what they're building there. Um, it's good to see, you know, because a lot of a lot of people have been down on Detroit for a while, and I know their fans are excited. And it's good for the NFC North to have have to have uh, arguably be the worst team, you know, in the preseason com- coming into the season. It's yeah. it's a good sign for that. So, um, yeah, this this is one that's a loss for me. Agree with everything you said. Should Lions fans calm down just a little bit? Yes. Two things can be true at the same time. All right. You guys haven't won a playoff game in 28 years. So let's just just get get there and then we can go from there. I'm with you though. I think this is a loss, and I'm just gonna rattle it right off. I mean, they head to Minnesota the very next week for Monday Night Football. I also have that as a loss, Corey. Um yeah. which takes them uh, do you also have that as a loss too as well to bring them to seven and five? Does that sound right? Yeah, to you? have them as yeah. seven and five, yep. At this point. Um yeah, Minnesota is a tough place to play. I feel like historically they play really well, especially when that when that skull horn is going on. They they get rocking in there. And uh yeah, I think this is one uh where the offense struggles a little bit. And uh like you said, you need to use this as a as a as a learning lesson, how to play on the road, how to adapt to that silent count. Um so this would be a good one, but uh ultimately a loss. So at that point they go on by. At long last, they finally get a bye week. Again, a late bye week for the Chicago Bears. I believe it's going to be week 13 at that point. And I think at that point, with a couple of losses under their belt, both for NFC North opponents, we're probably going to be doing a lot of soul-searching, a lot of talking. Can they do it? Can they take care of business? And, Corey, I mean, I think this is kind of the turning point in the season, personally, for the Chicago Bears, whether they want to stay in that Kornacki graphic of in the hunt for the playoffs or not. Yeah. And I think coming off of this bye, they host the Detroit Lions again that very next week at home in Soldier Field. I'm calling this a win. I think the Chicago Bears get off and bounce back. I think they split versus the Lions this year. It's going to be a really tight game. They were tight last year, um, and I think they win. What say you on this one? Yeah, I think they win, especially at home. Um, they, they play well against the Lions at home, so I think this is a win. I think they're upset that they lost the, the, the other one uh, to them. But I think ultimately, like I said, they split between the Vikings and the Lions. I think Justin Fields is going to have a bounce back game. Uh, they're all going to be recovered from that bye week, and they're going to be able to perform and get the dub um, at this point. So we're moving on. Uh, this one's tough, man. Um, I, I don't know how to feel about this next one. They go to Cleveland. Random AFC North matchup um, to play the Cleveland Browns. This is a House of Horrors game, right? No one wants to talk about the Matt Nagy game when Justin Fields made mm-hmm. his first road start um, and looked terrible. The game plan was awful. Um, I want to see well, where are you leaning on this one right now? Because I think this one's going to be a loss, you know, yeah. especially, uh, you know, Deshaun Watson. He's removed from all that drama and everything. Obviously, he did what he did and he, he got penalized for it. But I think I think ultimately people aren't buzzing about it. It's, it's not a topic of conversation anymore. Um I think this. I, I think he he bounced back this season. I think he he proves that he is still a top quarterback in this league. And I think especially at Cleveland with the dog pound, how they've been good. Obviously last year they weren't as good, but in the previous years they get that place rocking. Mm-hmm. I, I have this one as a loss. I love Nick Chubb, man. I think he's he's a fantastic running back. Um, his lower half is just uh, it's, it's quite a marvel. He's a very strong man. <laughs> And in this other thing, he tries to get stronger each and every single year. I also have this as a loss. So we got three games left, Corey. I'm at seven and seven. You're at eight and six right now. Here we go, baby. Um, it's Cardinals at home, Falcons at home, Packers on the road. Yeah. Uh, here we go, man. I mean, Cardinals at home. What you got for this one? I I got this as three and zero, Joey. You know, I do I, too. I, I do too. So I got them winning. I got them. So after they lose back to back to the Lions and the Vikings, they go on a bye week, and I got them winning four out of their last five, dude. That's where I'm at yeah. right now. Yeah, that's what I got them, man. I think they're going to finish uh, with with eleven wins this season. I think it'll be a great season. And uh, listen, you know, people can say what what they want uh, having having the Bears at ten or eleven wins, but I think it's it's very believable, especially how they've revamped this offense. Um, they're going to be night and day offensively in the run game, rush defense. They're going to be light years ahead of what they were last year, right? The big question mark is the pass rush, but as long as they can stop the run, they could be able to dial up some blitzes with the linebackers. And hopefully after these next cuts, uh, the June designation, we'll maybe be able to pick up some of these pass rushes that might be uh, released from a team because of a cap hit or, or whatnot. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think they're, they're going to finish with 10 or 11 wins. That was kind of 
my my uh you know when we're going through this that's kind of what i had in mind so i'm looking forward to it man i think it's definitely possible um who knows you know the, the bears can shock the world and maybe win some of these games we had as losses or, or vice versa you, you never know that's why they play the games every week yes. but from what we have right now i i think that's a pretty good you know i i could see anywhere from nine to eleven wins for sure just you. and look and look here's the deal Bears fans, all right? I can see the comments right now. You got to be out of your mind, everything. So a couple things. One, and this is irrefutable. One, they just did the numbers. We have one of the most rested. We're going to be one of the most rested teams with days off in terms of traveling schedule mm -hmm. that the Chicago, of any other team in the NFL right now. Odds makers in Vegas love that, by the way. And we're 7.5 wins right now over under. So it's not like we're like that far ahead of our skis. Second of all, what? We're a top five easiest schedule per the wins and losses of last year. If you kind of look at this right here, there's nothing that gets too crazy where we go on the road for some sort of long stretch or something maybe comes at a wrong time. We get the Chiefs early, which is fantastic. Yep. And then this last game schedule, you're telling me that the Cardinals right now are going to be trucking out Kyler Murray coming off an ACL in December in Chicago for what? Yep. They want the number one pick. They want a top pick next year. You're telling me yep. Desmond Ritter is going to be better than Justin Fields in that game playing at home? I mean, come on. And then finally, I just kind of like us with all that momentum being the Packers at home, and I like sweeping the Packers. So forgive me. Maybe it's that's my, bear, my bareness in there. But what we're trying to say is that, look, it's out there for this Chicago Bears team to be over 500, to possibly be in the playoff picture, even after a three and 14 team. If they don't go out and do that that, that that next year, we can rightfully sit here and healthily criticize where they're coming up short and where maybe this team maybe needs to continue to improve to get to a Super Bowl level. I don't think either of us are saying they're winning the Super Bowl, but we're saying no. with this schedule right here, it is sitting out there for the Chicago Bears to be an above 500 team. Justin Fields takes the next step and things start to get really interesting. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So I, I think this season, if Justin Fields does how we, how we mean you think he will do right with the weapons, uh, being able to elevate himself as a drop back passer, improve those passing statistics, improve the red zone production, uh, limit his carries, right. Be able to yes. take what the defense gives him when, when it's necessary, but not to rely on his feet. Right. And then get the running game going really establish that run, work the play action off it, be able to stop the run. They are probably a season or two if, if Justin Fields can elevate his game to, like we think, a season or two from competing for a playoff run for a Super Bowl. You know, I think really two more seasons after this. I think I, I think they'd be ready. I think there are a couple pass rushers away, right, to, to really revamp that defensive line, right, really get a talented three technique mm -hmm. and two really good ed edge rushers. I think at that point, that's when they take the next step because you look at all the teams that win the Super Bowl, right, or, or have a Super Bowl run like the Philadelphia Eagles, right? That If I'm the Bears, I'm trying to build my franchise like them. They've done all the right things. You look at how they drafted this past year, literally getting Jalen Carter and, and Nolan Smith in the first round, right, to yeah. add to the talented defensive line. So that's how you win games with those talented offense and defensive lines. And that's what Philly's been able to do, and that's what Chicago needs to do. And I know they didn't have all the picks and all the capital to be able to do everything this year, but next year is a we very got them big, next year, <laughs> yeah, yeah, is a, a very big year, right? Because they have two first rounders um, yep. that they can get some talented edge rushers, and I think I think they're a season or two away from really competing for a long playoff run, run and potentially a Super Bowl two years from now. Yeah, and if you really want to put your foot on the gas. You go out there maybe around draft time next year and you chop around that 2025 second round Carolina Panthers pick. And that Corey is a legitimate player. I don't know if you can get exactly. a top notch star maybe for that particular value, but I'm telling you, man, you get a pretty nice player, maybe some sort of disgruntled wide receiver X, Y, and Z. Um, that yeah. also can help you out too as well. Maybe cash in because you will have the capital next year. Maybe cash in some of that future capital. There's a lot of flexibility there. So Corey, yeah, just before is. we go, just before we go, speaking of flexibility, I just wanted to ask you really quick. Um, we you've been mentioning the defensive line. What are they going to do? They need to add to that room a little bit. Yeah. We got June cuts coming up in uh, just a couple of weeks. I believe it's June third is when you can start cutting some players, shedding some salary. How do you kind of see this playing out? Ryan Poles has said in multiple different interviews, we have flexibility. If we see something financially, we can go out. We can do it. Mm -hmm. We're going to do everything we can: trade, acquisition, to maybe beef up that room. Yeah. 
Do you have a guy that you like a whole lot? What do you see them doing? Is it one guy? Is it two guys? Yeah, lay it on us right now. What do you want to see? I got two guys um, that are both free agents right now. Frank Clark is one of them that Ryan Poles is familiar with from his time in Kansas City, right? He's, I, I think he's a little overhyped for what he wants in the market. I think he wants more than he's worth. But when it comes down to a veteran guy that has pass rush ability, he hasn't always put up the numbers in the regular season, but in the postseason, he, he really uh, performs. And I think in this bear system where he's going to be the guy for at least a year, it's a win-win for him, right? Because if he has a double-digit year, he's going to get paid by whoever, right, yep. at this point, because pass rushers are hard to come by. And then Yannick Ngunku, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, from, I've heard uh, it like five. Di- I've heard from, it five different ways. Yeah. 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 He he uh, is coming from uh, free agent from I think the Colts. I believe he's been on five teams in yeah. the last six yeah. years. So again, but, also but do, over, former over Jaguar, NFL, former yeah. Cole, yeah. Over his NFL career, he's averaged like seven and a half sacks a year. So he's a guy that I'm not expecting him to play the run. I'm not expecting that. But in a situational pass rush, I'm putting him in there. If we get him and Frank Clark, and you have them on the edges, you kick the Marcus. Walker inside at the three mm-hmm. technique. You have Justin Jones in there or Dervon Dexter or, or Zach Pickens, and you have them in there. And that's that's your NASCAR rush package at that point. You need pass rush. You need edge rushers. And I think Frank Clark and Yannick would fill those needs, right? And I'm fine with him being a situational pass rusher. You kind of look at how O.C. Minora was towards the end of his career, right? Mm-hmm. He really wasn't playing the run like that on the pass rush ability. And in third down, that's how you get off the field. So I wouldn't mind him being in that situation. So those are two guys I'm looking for that are available still, but I think you could work it out for, for a deal that makes sense for both, both parties. I think one is mandatory, two would be fantastic, and I think it would honestly be smart because, look, there's a lot of snaps that go around in an NFL football game and guys get hurt. You need depth. So bringing in two vets like that I think would be a great move. Um, real quick, just because a lot of people, they're going to ask about it. He was in the organization, so Bears fans kind of know him, and he's a familiar name. Leonard Floyd, fit, no fit. Uh, if the price is right, uh, what do you think about if the Bears were to possibly look about bringing him in? I wouldn't mind it at all. I feel like he's really developed as a pass rusher when he left. Um, it's just like I, I wonder. Um, he, he's kind of been that that hybrid type that, that stands up a little bit, puts his hand in the dirt. But I think in this Tampa two scheme, I think he could really flourish at that right end. Um, I, I feel like since he left the Bears. He's really established himself as as a more dominant pass rusher. That's something that he kind of lacked for for being such a lean guy. He played the run extremely well and wasn't pass rushing well for the Bears. So I think he's established himself um, as a pass rusher. So I wouldn't mind taking a look at him. You know, if if we can get any of those three guys, um, Leonard Floyd, Frank Clark, you know, Yannick, just for the pass rush ability, you can get anybody to play the run, Joey. It's it's really about pass rush production. And the Bears had seven sacks, seven and a half sacks at the defensive line. Uh, our Brisker, I believe, led the team in sacks. So I think he has telling you everything you need to know. While Philly had four guys in double digits. You have to believe that even when Robert Quinn wasn't putting up major numbers last year, he was at least – people were putting Attention. eyeballs eyeballs on him, right? And when you say, oh, Dom Robinson gets a sack and a half in week one, you have to think some of that has to do with a veteran presence on the other side taking some of that space a little bit. Yeah, as you said, some of that attention. And the Bears just kind of need that. They need someone out there that can produce and also take away some of that attention so the young guys can kind of grow and get up. Uh, that's going to do it for Chicago, uh, Believe in Bears, Believe Sports Network, right here in Sports Talk Chicago. Comment and question below. Uh, make sure you like the video. Tell all of your friends. Thank you for listening on SiriusXM or wherever you get your podcast. I'm Joey Christopoulos. You can follow me at Joey Sports Guy. Former Bears defensive end Corey Wooten. Follow him at Corey Wooten. Two O's, two T's. Get it right. Uh, But other than that, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Be well, be safe, be good to each other. Corey, take us home on a great podcast, man. Great to see you. And congratulations, man. Have a wonderful weekend, dude. I'm so happy and proud for you. The endeavor is going to be fantastic. And all the East Coasters listening, take a trip. Please, just take a trip. Take a trip and get some swings in. Yeah, you got to. I'm going to get a lot of swings before the opening uh, because – You know, I'm going to be there Thursday, all of Friday. Uh, My back's going to be killing me. My arm's going to be hurting, but it's going to be worth it, man. Uh, So, yeah, come out out and check out the simulator. Um, But another good pod. uh, Schedule release. We we had to talk about that, wins and losses. And I know some people in the comments listening to this might say, hey, you guys are absolutely insane for 10, 11 wins. I think 
I said it from the beginning, I think nine to 11 wins when I first saw that schedule, somewhere around there. I think 11, and it could, it could end up being more, depending on how this offense develops, what pieces they add on the defensive line. I think that's the biggest question mark right now. Um, how Braxton Jones does at the left tackle. Did he get stronger? Is he going to be like David Bakhtiari from year one to year two? All, all these pieces to the puzzle, how is it going to add up? All I know, though, is they put the pieces to the puzzle for Justin Fields to succeed. There's no excuses at this point, Joey, right? Yes. All the criticism, if he does not perform well, it's warranted at this point, right? So we're going to see what he's made of. I think he has what it takes to be an elite quarterback. There were teams that would have killed for Justin Fields you know, last year, right? I think he's somebody you can build your franchise on. He's a competitor. He's going to get it done. And he's going to prove to everyone that he can be a pocket passer. He can read defenses. He's not just a running back like J.D. McCoy said. So I think this is going to be a huge year for the Bears. And tune in. We're, we're going to be we're going to be breaking it down. If there's any more moves, any any noteworthy stuff, we're going to continue to give you the, the breaking Bears news as it happens. So we're excited, uh, you know, for, for this offseason and, and what else comes with it. Um, so it's, it's going to be an interesting bear season. And, you know, I know every year it seems like we're excited for this, but I think this year is, is really the turning point because I think we finally got our franchise quarterback and that's something the bears have never had, right? The, the yep. arguably the best quarterback was Jay Cutler, right? You know how, how that went, right? It was up and down, but I think we really have a franchise quarterback that you can build this team around in Justin Fields. I think Bears fans are going to see that this year. So looking forward to it. And uh, like you always say, be well, be safe, and bear down, baby. Success is out there. This team's just got to go out there and grab it. That's why we're going to be so excited to bring you great content here on Believe in Bears all summer long. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I agree with my co-host, Bear Down. We'll be back. <laughs>